Hello again, friends. It's the Cranky Yankee here in another uh, video. Oh, my hair looks bad. Shit. Would you turn back on, please? Thank you. Um, so, um, I think this is true. Um, this was just text uh, tweeted out by Bob McKenzie, but apparently Jason Zucker is um, now a member of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, which makes me excited, but also very concerned considering what we gave up. Although... One of them I don't care. The second one eh, only affects us this year, though. And then the third one I didn't know anyone anything about. So the Pittsburgh Penguins apparently have traded Alex Galchenyuk, Kalen Addison, who's a defensive prospect I know nothing about, but apparently he's pretty good or pretty solid, um, and a 2020 first-round pick for Matt Zucker from Minnesota. Who's on his deal? Who's on a five and a half million dollar deal for the next three years? He's twenty eight years old. Um, I think the first was a bit high, but if he can be a solid forward like he's been in Minnesota and continue to do, you know, if he's a 50, 60 point guy for the next two, for for the rest of his contract, he's twenty eight, so he could technically he's in his prime. So you could argue that if he's he, he could he could be a 40, 50, 60 point guy for the next three years, and if he is, I'd still say the first is high, but we're in win now mode. I mean, we won't, the 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 window with Gino and Sid is closing. And if we want to win more cups, which obviously we do, and I would argue, I would argue this, and you out there, tell you fans of hockey, let me know. If Pittsburgh wins a cup this year, that will be three cups in five years. Would you consider them a dynasty? Personally, I would. Because that would be three cups in five years and four cups in in eleven. I think it's eleven. It's what two? two what, wait, what year did they? Was it? Oh, was it oh nine? It was yeah, it was oh nine. So yeah, they won an oh nine, and then sixteen seventeen. They win a cup again this year in twenty twenty. Would that be five? Would that be twenty twenty? That'd be five and that would. Be three cups, yeah, three cups in five years, because we have two, two, then two. Yeah, be three cups in five. Yeah, sorry, my my math got off. Yeah, but anyways, I got a little off topic. So yeah, so we got Zucker. Um, I don't, I, I from what I've heard, he's a good, solid forward. He's a good. I mean, I know a lot. I know Minnesota fans love him. I have a couple of friends that are Minnesota fans that really love him, but I don't. I haven't been paying attention to his points. I don't really watch Minnesota, so I don't know a whole hell of a lot about him. Um, any of you guys who are Minnesota fans who know anything about, who, who watch Zucker or know a little more about him, let me know what you got, let me know about him, and let, let me know what you guys think of him in, in the comment section below. Do you think, uh, who do you think won this trade? Um, do you think that Minnesota robbed Pittsburgh? Um, do you think it was pretty even, or do you think that Pittsburgh won the trade? Um, I don't, my personal opinion is I don't think we can really, we can really make that decision yet. Um, because if Pittsburgh wins the cup, Pittsburgh wins that trade. Period. Because Galchenyuk wasn't doing anything. Not here. You know, I really, really wanted him to be good. I really wanted Galchenyuk to have a renaissance over here in Pittsburgh. Not over here, but, but I really wanted him to do well in Pittsburgh. I, wa I, I was like, you know, maybe he just needs to be in a role or needs to be on a team like Pittsburgh where he can, you know, he can learn how to win and, and everything. Now, here's my thing. If we had gotten Galchenyuk sooner, and by sooner I mean like earlier in his career, We could, we, we could probably, could he probably be a lot better player or be a lot better producer in the league right now than he was? Or, or would be a better point producer in the league now than he is? Sorry. Um, but, anyway, but you know, hey, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, Pittsburgh's been playing out of their mind. Despite, and I, and, and okay, we're not the best in, we're not the best in the league, but. We've been playing out of our mind, and that's the entire team has been playing out of our minds. Because when we've got been when without guys like Gino and Sid at the same time, because there was a small portion, I think, where they are both out. But, I mean, we've been out without Sid for half the year almost, half the season. 
Gino was out for a good chunk too. And we had guys like Bluger and, um, oh, fuck, what's his name? What's the third line center? I can't think of his name right now. Why is it blanking? I want to say Vinny Trocek, but that's Florida. Um, was it Bluger? For a while, they had, well, Blandisi was playing that third line for a while, too. And Blandisi came up and played well, too. Um, if you guys look back farther, you'll see the video of, uh, it's called a, a penguin sighting. You actually see, um, I actually met them at a bar. I mean, I didn't videotape meeting them. I didn't want to be all up in their face with the camera went over and said hi, because it's a little weird. But I have a video where I was at my booth, and they walked in, and you saw um, Blandisi was there. Joseph Cramoroso, I think, played a little bit, but Blandisi's played a hell of a lot. Is, is in my opinion, Blandisi's a lot more potentially an NHL player than Cramoroso ever will be. But Cramoroso is a decent player. And uh, Tristan Jari was there, too, because this was when he was still playing for Wilkes-Bear. Um, I was going to see that, but we had just, everyone's been been doing so well. Just everybody. Like, and we still got guys like Aston Reese down at our bottom six. Like, we have, I would argue, um, I would argue that Pittsburgh is at the best bottom six in the league. I think our third and fourth line, and the great thing about our third and fourth line is it's a revolving door, but yet it doesn't get worse, really. Because everyone pulls their weight. Or not everyone pulls their weight, but when people who don't pull their weight, everyone... It, like, it evens out. Like, because Galchenik wasn't pulling his weight. But the guys that he played with were dragging him. We're like, it seems like Pittsburgh's mindset kind of is like that kind of like platoon. Like, win by, like, like it's, it's, it's a platoon. And like in the military, like, you have a platoon and that's your, that's your team. Like, you can go back and forth. But like, when... I think of like those those videos you see of of training of basic training where you have like your platoon like uh, and um a really good example we'll say is that movie Major Pain with Damon Wayans where like he all the kids hate him but they all band together and like you know they become amazing and they do really well because they they you know they become a part of a team and they work together good bad or indifferent they're a team and they you know ride or die kind of thing but like we're like a team that like your own Pittsburgh realizes that you're only as strong as your weakest link. You're only as good as your weakest person. And rather than taking that weakest person and either getting rid of them or throwing them to the wolves or just saying whatever, bye, like most of the teams do, we go down there, we grab them, pull them, and then we drag them until we can find a way to get them out. Like, if we don't have another option, which we generally don't, like Galchenya, like he played because even though he didn't play well, we still didn't really have anybody that was better than him in a, that bottom six role. Like, he was still capable at times. But the other guys around him made up for his discrepancies. Or at least did their best to. And that's why we're doing so good without our stars. Am I saying that this team could win without um, Sidney and Gino? Yes. Not without Jake Gensel. Can do without him and Jake Gensel. Because believe me, uh, t Jake Gensel is... I think Jake Gensel is one of those things where I, Jake Gensel is an elite talent and nobody realizes it. Nobody, everyone's like, no, oh, he's a really good top six. No, he's a fucking elite talent. He was a second round steal by Pittsburgh. This kid was phenomenal. He's always been good. From the second he came in this league, that kid was good. And it breaks my fucking heart that Jake Gensel is out this year. Because everyone thinks I'm a Sidney Crosby fan and he's not. He asks you, who's your favorite penguin? I'm like, Jake Gensel. Like, I'm like, Jake Gensel is my favorite player in that whole team. He's the best player on that team, in my opinion. Do I think he's better than Sid? No. But, there's gonna, it's gonna come a day, very soon, where he will be. Because, Sid's just not gonna get better. He's, he's gonna probably either stay as good as he is, or he's gonna slowly get worse. But I think Jake Gensel can do a lot of the stuff that Sidney can, too. And people don't give him enough credit for that. And I think he's learned a lot of that from working with Sid. And let's not forget now. Everyone forgets. Jake Gensel's a center. He's always been a center. He's just never been played at one. He's always been a wing. Because he plays so good with Sid. He's just great on that left wing. It works. But let me tell you. When Sid goes, there's your first line center. Or argue if Sid goes, it, Sid won't go. Gino will go before Sid goes if either of them go. I could see, I could see, I could see Malkin moving. Possibly. But I think he would move. I, I think he he would sign with another team reluctantly. I think the only way that Malkin 
would leave the Pittsburgh Penguins as if we did not re-sign him. It would be the only way, and it would be reluctantly. Um, but I don't, I don't, I, I, I would be very shocked if, if, if Sidney Crosby and um, Evgeny Malkin don't retire as Penguins. I'd be very, very surprised if they don't. Um, I'd be very surprised if Jake Gensel doesn't re doesn't retire as a Penguin, um, honestly. But anyways, I've blathered on and on and on and on enough about this, and I've absolutely gotten off the topic of Jason Zucker. I think it's Jason Zucker. It's Jason Zucker, right? Zucker, from Minnesota, whatever. Zucker, Zucker, whatever, however it's pronounced. Anyways, let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think of the trade, what you think of him. Now, just to recap, remember, that was Pittsburgh got Jason Zucker... For Alex Galchenyuk, Kalen Addison, and a 2020 first round pick. And I think they overpaid. But, if we win a cup, we win. Hands down. Because, I don't care any way you look at it, Zucker is absolutely an upgrade from Galchenyuk. Absolutely. The question is, where are they going to play him next year? Could it be maybe... Gensel, Zucker, and Crosby on the first line next year? Hmm? That's not a bad idea. I wish him good options. And I'm then he's young enough to where I really do think that Zucker's gonna be still be good for the next couple of years. He'll for the rest of this contract and at five and a half million a year, that's not bad. I'm I'm not and the thing is it's not a bad contract. He's worth it. I absolutely think he's worth five and a half million. Sure. If he can put up 50, 60 points a year, absolutely. I'm okay with that contract at all. It's three years, so it's not even rental. He's got term. And we knew that Galchenik was not the future, Not a, did not have a future in this organization. I, I really want him to do good. Like I said, he, that it wasn't. And obviously, um, obviously, Rutherford saw that he wasn't, there wasn't a really positive future for him. Maybe he's probably, like in Pittsburgh, he'd be a fourth liner. Probably. For the majority of his time, if he stayed, he'd probably be a fourth liner. And there are guys I'd rather have on the fourth line. Blandisi, Cramarosa, and Aston Reese. I'd rather have any of those three guys on the fourth line over Galchenyuk. Third line, I'd put him on. But fourth line, no. I'm like, no. There's no point. You're not going to score goals on the fourth line. And you're not defensive enough to play the penalty kill. It's just I just feel like the better. And I like to roll four lines, so you know. And I just, but it just I don't think he he's the kind of guy that needs to have top six minutes to just even put up forty points. In my opinion, that might be a little harsh, but yeah. Anyways, I'm done. That's it. I know it's the third time I've said that, but I mean it this time. Um, I'm the cranky ankle. Let me guys know what you think in the box comment section below about this trade. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. We'll see you guys in the next one.